So, you decided to not show the evidence. That despite everything you do, that despite, you know all the risks here. That if you don't do the, that if you don't show this evidence, you'll, and it becomes realized that you had it, you'll be put in contempt of court. But you did this because you know Emma's fingerprints are on these. If you showed this, that she would be the murderer. No ifs, ands, or buts. Because you already, because you, once you declare who the murderer is, there's no way to further prove, disprove it. However, if you look, you realize this is worded differently. It's not that don't show the evidence, it says cannot show the evidence. Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. What? You lie! Chief Gant? You! You opened my safe! I know you took what was inside! You conclusive evidence! Nope. I don't know what you're talking about! Mr. Wright! Why don't you show them? You found it together! Oh, I see. It's because you know the truth, don't you? You know his fingerprints are on it. That's why you won't present it! What are you talking about, Chief Gant? Can't you figure it out? Take a good look at this picture. See the victim's vest. Notice anything odd about the chest area? It's like the part of it's been cut off for some reason. You mean you had this? And you're safe? What? That means you, the chief of police, concealing evidence? This is going to be the, the biggest scandal in the history of the police department. And he still looks upstanding. <laughs> Impressive. To be honest, I didn't think you had the gall, Rido. Well, I can't just let you pin me up as the murderer. I'll tell you what really happened. What? You mean, you admit to it? <sighs> I was the first person to arrive at the crime scene that day. It then occurred to me that I could use the situation to control Lana. So you really were manipulating her. I knew Lana. If I made it look like the blame lay on with her sister, then she would saw the crime scene. She would ask me for my aid. So you assisted Miss Sky. I told her to arrange all the evidence. I had her plant the knife tip in the victim's body and move the body across the room. And I ended up using that evidence to get Joe Dark convicted. When we arranged the crime scene, it had two pieces of evidence. I did this before Ilana arrived at the scene. Two pieces of evidence? You mean those two in your safe? But why? For insurance. Of course. Insurance? I was sure my plan would work, but it was always best to be prepared for the worst. I wasn't about to let anyone blame me for a murder or a girl committed. You mean you were calculating that far ahead while forging the evidence? Who do you take me for, fool? I didn't make police chief by dumb luck. See this jar fragment? I hid the most legible part of Emma's name. I didn't expect Lana to go and wipe the blood off all the pieces. But if you fabricated all the evidence, why did you... What's to say you didn't fabricate the messes on this jar too? Ho, ho, ho. Some people just don't know when to quit, do they? That's why I kept one more item for insurance. You mean, that piece of cloth. Come on, Rido. Cough it up already. I know you have it. What are you waiting for, Mr. Wright? So you admit to it then, Chief Gant? That you were hiding the cloth you cut off the victim's vest in your safe? Yes, I admit it. I didn't want to have to do that, being Chief and all. But it's a lot better than being portrayed as a murderer. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say for yourself? Just a moment ago, you said you didn't have any evidence you could present. Foolish move, Righto. You should have shown it then before it was too late. It's been a long battle. But the moment of truth has finally arrived. As long as I don't mess up here, 
victory is mine. But now, it's safe to show this evidence. Your Honor, I do have evidence to present now. Alright then, let's show this conclusive evidence. The evidence that shows who actually murdered Prosecutor Marshall. This strip of cloth. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest. Oh, yes! At least you've at last you've finally brought out brought it out into the open. There's a handprint on this piece of cloth. Your Honor, the prosecution request is immediately sent to the lab for analysis. This handprint on the leather. There must have been a strong impact for it to be clearly less so clearly. You mean it could not have been forged. It must be authentic, conclusive evidence. Ho 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 ho. You're as slow on the uptake as ever, worthy. What? Think about it. Rido had all this time to present this evidence. Yet he was reluctant to do so. Why would that be? You mean you already know? You know whose fingerprints are on that? Mr. Wright, do you really know? Whoever the fingerprints belong to, to must be the real murderer. Whose fingerprints are they? Very well, I'll tell you. It should be okay now. Everything's proceeding as predicted. The person whom these fingerprints belong to are... Emma Sky. Emma? Emma Sky? What? They're mine? I'm sorry, Emma. But why? Why did you tell me? <laughs> You're really something, Rhino. You knew this girl did it all along, and you still tried to pin the murder on me. So it's true. Tragic, but true. This girl really did shove Prosecutor Marshall to his death. How could you? You, you monster! M Miss Skye? You knew whose fingerprints those were all along, yet you... You acted like she really didn't. <sighs> Miss Skye. It's not over yet. What? I said this trial isn't over yet. Ha! <laughs> but I'm afraid it is over, boy. Not only this trial, but your career too! You purposely concealed this conclusive evidence. That, my friend, is a serious offense. I'm looking forward to pressing charges after the defendant is convicted. I'll have your beds, boy! What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Aren't you going to tell us how it feels? How it feels to be the one who single-handedly turned a poor little girl into a murderer? Now I have a staring problem. Before I do that, there's just one little thing I have to clear up. Oh? And what's that? Who really killed Prosecutor Neil Marshall? What? Chief Gant, you are absolutely right. This piece of cloth proves who the real murderer is. Who killed Neil Marshall, you ask? It was Emma Sky, wasn't it? No. I'm afraid that's not possible. You see, this piece of cloth contains a critical contradiction. What? A contradiction? What is this fool babbling about? I'm talking about a contradiction. One that proves who the real killer is. Mr. Wright, this piece of cloth, what could it possibly contradict? Chief Gant, your, tyr your tyrannical, tyrannical reign ends here. I said it right. Behold, the piece of evidence that contradicts this cloth. Take that. And what exactly is this supposed to be? This is the picture Miss Sky took. Take a good look at it. See where the piece of his vest was cut out? Yes, his shirt is showing underneath. It's hard to make out with all the blood on his vest, though. Especially, exactly my point! His chest is soaked with blood, that's only natural. His lungs do no doubt were punctured. Blood poured out from his mouth. Oh, but that's a piece of the cloth. Wait, there's no blood on it. Ugh. 
since Emma Sky's fingerprints were on this cloth. There's no doubt that, that she shoved the prosecutor aside. However, Mr. Marshall was not impaled by the sword. No, this is nonsense! Now then, Chief Gant, let me ask you something. Prosecutor Marshall was not impaled when, when he was shoved aside. He most likely hit his head on the ground and was knocked out. If so, then tell me, who could it have been? Who could have arrived at the scene before Miss Sky? Picked up on the picked up the conscious prosecutor and impaled him on the sword on the arm of the sword. <laughs> then to make it look like Emma was responsible for the prosecutor's death, said person proceeded to write her name on her name on the jar with the victim's blood. Then he broke the jar on purpose to leave behind a clue. And make Lana believe her sister did it. <laughs> Remember what you admitted only moments ago? That you personally cut out this bloodless piece of the victim's vest? Ironic, isn't it? Though the very act, through the very act creating, of creating insurance, you proved that you were the actual murderer. <laughs> no! It's finished. Objection! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was close, Rhino. You almost had me there. Huh? Sorry, but you'll have to do better than that. I refute your allegations. What do you mean you refute his allegations? You see, that piece of cloth is illegal evidence. Order! Order! What nonsense is this? Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a suspect. Remember, Uji? Earlier, old Rido here concealed that piece of cloth. <laughs> so then, what's your excuse, Rido? You do have most some conclusive evidence, don't you? Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this time. At this point in time. Well, that's true. The defense did refuse to present evidence. At that moment, that piece of cloth ceased to be legal evidence. But that's not fair! <laughs> Did you actually think you could be best me in court? It looks like the last laugh's on you, son! I'm afraid Mr. Gaunt's claim is legally correct. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, true, illegal evidence cannot be used in to convict a person. Assuming, of course, that the evidence is indeed illegal. Mm hmm? Well, Mr. Wright? It seems, at last, the time for me to reveal my plan has finally arrived. Well, Mr. Wright, do you admit to it? That you purposefully and illegally concealed that piece of cloth? I did not, actually. I certainly... Certainly, I refuse to present evidence at one point. <laughs> Still, the evidence is illegal! <clears throat> no, it isn't, Mr. Gaunt. <laughs> it's not that I didn't present evidence, then. It's that I couldn't! You mean you... you couldn't? Yeah, the, te the text said so. There were certain procedures involved when presenting evidence. No, Uji, don't listen to his lies! He's nothing but a coward! You can't let him! There is only one issue left to be resolved in this trial. Is this evidence legal or not? Very well. Let us settle this once and for all. Earlier you refused to present evidence. If you can prove your conduct was not in violation of the laws, then do so now. Okay. Here's the laws! This is my proof, Your Honor. Evidence law. What's this? I've done my homework, too, Chief. Indeed, Miss Emma Sky's fingerprints were on this piece of cloth. However, at that point in time, this was merely a piece of cloth, nothing more. What? You see, it's written right here in this book. The second rule of evidence law. <laughs> rule one. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. I found this piece of evidence myself, inside your safe. It goes without saying I did not have the approval from the police department. 
Rule 2. Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case in trial. And here's the crux of the matter. You see, at the time it was impossible for me to prove the relevance between the cloth and the SL9 incident. What? What kind of nonsense is this? You want relevancy? Just, we'll take one look at this picture and... Sorry, but can you recall when was that picture presented? That was shown only a few moments ago. No! He's right. At the beginning of today's trial, that piece of cloth was still meaningless. The person who gave it value as evidence was you, Damon Gantz. <laughs> you yourself confessed to a certain truth. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this person this piece of the victim's vest. <laughs> oh yes! <sighs> no! It was then that you approved this cloth. That's conclusive evidence. Yes, you, the chief of police, personally approved this cloth. The only person who could have cut this from the victim's vest is the one who stood before the prosecutor marshal in his final moments. In other words, the real murderer, and there's only one person who that could be, Damon Gaunt! The killer was you! <laughs> <laughs> Got him! I knew I should have gotten rid of him. That good for nothing scum. For two years, he's been snooping around the department trying to get something on me. Crimes are being committed every day, yet he insisted on hounding me. Well, your crime wasn't exactly petty. He wanted to reinvestigate the case. He recruited Angel Star, then convinced Bruce Goodman. Detective Bruce Goodman? Yeah, that's right. If that evidence is transferred, I'll lose my only chance to find out the truth. Please, you've got to help me. Goodman, Goodman turned him down, as he ought to. Still, Jake Marshall didn't know when to quit. He stole Goodman's ID card and tried to take the evidence. Goodman came to me that day. He wanted to file a lost item report. I went with him to the evidence room. <laughs> then all of a sudden, he had to speak out. What are you talking about, Goodman? Can you please be over the investigation, Chief? We can't transfer the evidence out. There's too many questions left unanswered. <laughs> he told me to open up the evidence room and take it out. It's not too late. I'll hand this to Marshall. Well, to be honest, it was a little. I was a little panicked too. I had a bad feeling about it, but I never knew it would come to this. That was when I saw it. That accursed knife. I couldn't just pull it out. You would only increase the amount of blood, and you couldn't finish what you started. Even so, the blood was just pouring out. I didn't know who might stumble in, so I was wiping it up. I was worried so much about the floor, I didn't realize my mistake. Detective Gumshoes. Bloody handprints. I used to be known as the crime computer. But everyone has to start somewhere, I guess. I was too nervous. I had no business doing any of it. Then you put the body in, th in my car. I'm sorry. We couldn't think of any th other better way to move the body. We broke the trunk, but what's the big deal? You pulled down a lot more than us detectives. <sighs> what does this have to do with anything? You're horrible! How could you get Miss Guy involved in all of this? Well, she had as much to lose as I had as I did if the truth came out. So you took the evidence from Detective Goodman's locker. I feel bad for having to do it. I couldn't sit around and pick and choose what to take. Well... You left the jar fragments and gloves. 
Yeah. It looks like I was better off being an investigator of crimes than a committer. They all did their best to get in my way. They got to- I've got to hand it to them! They do their jobs well, much to my dismay. Fake evidence doesn't hold up very well upon closed examination. You must have known that. Tell me, Worthy. What are you doing in court? Me? You despise criminals! And can- I can feel it, you and me. We're the same. One day, you'll understand. If you want to take them on alone, you'll figure out what's needed. Well, looks like it's time to say goodbye. Oh, Uji? What? Looks like we'll have to cancel that lunch date. <laughs> Sorry, old friend. I'm sorry too, David Gaunt. I knew you uh, as you used to be long ago. You were once a fine investigator and an example to others on the force. I'm sorry to learn that you are no longer that person. Those days are gone now, Uggy. Thanks for all the memories, though. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll be fine. Now you have Rido here. And worthy. With these two around, you can't go wrong. You see, if I listen carefully, I can hear it right now. The sound of a new beginning. There are two things I want you to understand. Yes? First, your sister never hurt anyone. Second, Demon God betrayed you from the beginning. You see, Miss Sky? You no longer have any reason to keep silent. You're right. When this trial is over, I'll tell everything. All I've done these past two years, from the time I had Gant help me forge evidence up until today. So, it seems all the questions raised in this trial have, all, have been answered. I'm sorry, Miss Sky. I couldn't get you out of all your trouble. My, my. What high standards you have for a rookie. Hmm? I can see why Mia thought so highly of you. Who knows? A few years from now, you just might take make it to the top. <laughs> <laughs> I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. Miss Sky. And to you too, Mr. Edgeworth. You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. Believe me, I know how much an ordeal it's been for you. <laughs> it was nothing. <laughs> Liar. I was worried the pressure might break you. And yet, you rose above it all and guided Mr. Wright to victory. You've done well, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> Stop it! I, on I only did my job. In light of this case, it seems a good self-examining is in order for all of us. Sky. Yes, Your Honor. You are innocent of murder. However, although the chief blackmailed you, the fact is that you still acted as his, as his accomplice. A trial will be scheduled for these crimes at a later date. Yes, I understand, Your Honor. I is there something amusing about all this? Why are you smiling? It's been a long time, Your Honor. A long time since I felt free of these heavy chains. Well, this trial has gone on far too long already. Regarding the charge of murder, this court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Sky, not guilty. That is all. The court is adjourned. Finally done it. Finally done it. Long last. It's finally over. E Emma? Why the long face? 
I'm sorry your sister didn't get completely off the hook, but at least she wasn't convicted for a murder she didn't commit. No, that's not it. Just now, after all the trial ended, I can see why M Mia Fey thought so highly of you. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. And you too, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. You've done well. <laughs> you know, I did my best too. But Lana didn't say a single word to me. Hope I'm not interrupting anything. Dang it, Gumshoe. Read the mood. Uh, oh, uh, I guess I am. I'll come back later. No, I'm jo I'm just jo joking. Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Making a detective run around all while on duty. And on top of it off, you call me. I've seen happier people at funerals. Hey, I'm not pals. I'm only kidding. Oh, are you here because of my sister again? Nope, not this time. <laughs> I came today because of you, pal. Me? That's right. I, I thought you'd like to see someone. Lana! Should you be doing this? She's still under arrest, you know. Mm. <laughs> well, I won't tell if you won't. Emma. I owe you an apology. It's okay, sis. Don't worry about it. That day, two years ago. Was the first time in my life I ever panicked. It was all I could do to keep myself from screaming. All I could think about was keeping you from getting wrapped up in that mess. Uh, sis. I asked God to help me cover up the truth. I thought I was doing it for this for your sake. But now I realized I was wrong. I changed after that day. I had to. It was the only way I could make it through make it through the past two years. I knew how much I was hurting you by distancing myself. But I couldn't bring myself to tell you what I did. I I was scared. Scared that you'd look at me without the with those eyes of yours. I was scared of how you'd react if you knew. But sis, you were doing it for me. No. Huh? I turned my back on you that day. In hiding what I believed to be the truth, I was deceiving you. Sis. I'm such a fool. It took me all this time to realize it. Emma, I'm so sorry. But sis! You don't have to apologize. I'm happy now. You're happy? Of course. You know, sis, I always knew that one day you'd come back. And now I, and now you have. <laughs> oh, Emma. Emma. No one can change the past. The only thing we can do is strive to make up for our mistakes. Why must we make up for our mistakes, you ask? Because, in doing so, we can find the way back to our path. And once we found our path, we can move on from our past, making with our past mistakes toward a brighter future. At least, that's what I felt, looking at those two sisters' makeup. Mr. Wright, Mr. Gumshoe. M me Thank you both for all you've done. I'm sure we'll meet again someday. Isn't that right? Edgeworth. Edgeworth? Stop hiding and come over here. Edgeworth? Where was he hiding? I just came to say congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, right. Well, uh, I'll be going now. Mr. Edgeworth, I hope you don't blame yourself for what happened. <laughs> we were the ones who acted corruptly, not you. <laughs> it's too late for me. <gasps> no matter what anyone may say, I realize today that I can't change my own mistakes. Mr. Edgeworth, 
Not only that, but I don't even trust myself anymore. Chief Gaunt was right. You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me, we're the same. <laughs> One day you'll understand. If you want to take them all alone, you'll figure out what's needed. I do despise criminals. I plan to, I plan to dedicate my entire life to fighting them. But in order to fight crime alone, one needs a weapon. It's scary. But I've been thinking the same thing for quite some time now. But Edsworth, who knows? Given enough time, I might have tried to pull something like Chief Gaunt did. That thought terrifies me. That's why I can't continue as a prosecutor. Edsworth, don't you understand? Damon Gaunt and your mentor, Manfred von Karma, were both the best of the best when it came to fighting crime. But they both made the same mistake. You said in order to fight crime alone, one needs a weapon. That may be right, but think back to today's trial. He went alone. You were working together with Mr. Wright. And because of that partnership, you were able to present evidence that otherwise would have gone undiscovered. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Huh? What? Oh, oh, yeah! What is this, a pop quiz? Come on, Mr. Wright, show him what Lana's talking about. Evidence? That neither Edgeworth nor I would have been able to find on our own. I know it. I know it now. It literally... I literally would have... would not have been able to solve this on my own. And honestly? No, what Edgeworth? Here. Take this. That's the picture I drew. Our counterattack began with this. You had one half of the evidence list and I had the other. Apart, you wouldn't have been able to completely restore Emma's picture. That didn't just happen by chance, Edgeworth. It's time for me to go. Mr. Edgeworth? If you'll excuse me, there are still some loose ends that need wrapping up. Take care, Chief Prosecutor. Edgeworth, what will you do now? Well, whatever you do, just remember, what happened in this trial could either make or break you as a prosecutor. In the end, it's up to you. I know. It <laughs> seems I owe you my thanks too, right? But what I face now is my problem. Edgeworth, I'll be waiting for you in court. Farewell. I better get, be getting back too. Okay, I'll come visit you. It seems we both still have a lot of learning. Here, this is for a little something for you. Scientific investigation. It's the first book I've ever bought. Study it well. You think this? I will! <laughs> and so, another case came to a close. As for the sisters, I have faith. Faith that their lives have only just begun. And as for me, I think it's time I started on a new journey of my own. A journey to rediscover myself. Well, don't go check it off just yet, pal. Huh? What is it, detective? There's just a little matter to be resolved about the chief prosecutor. You see, she isn't supposed to be out of jail like this. But, I thought you said it was okay. Yeah, well, it may be okay with me, but the folks at the prison are a different story. Huh? Basically, I had to bribe a guard in order to sneak her out here for, for 30 minutes. It's that one back there. Believe me, it wasn't cheap either. Huh? Way to go, detective! I didn't know you had a wild side. Yeah, well, <laughs> you see. Mr. Wright here is the one who, who'll be footing the bill. Huh? Huh? What, you think I could afford it with my salary? You gotta be kidding me, pal. My bonus was 10 bucks. Huh? 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 
Thank you, Mr. Wright. You're the best. Why is it? I suddenly feel like I'm wanting to scream. Since we're all here, why don't we all go together? Yeah, that's a great idea. Come on, guys. Let's go. Well, it's actually been pretty good. I arranged for a friend of mine in Europe to take care of Emma. She's a coroner. I think Emma will be pleased. As for me, this affair has pretty much ended my days for the prosecutor's office. Still, I managed to find my way back to the field somehow. Then, I'll be able to investigate crimes together with Emma. While you're doing these, you can kind of sweep them away. You know, when it comes to the characters. Well, this game's good and all, and it was... Yikes! I thought I was gone for a moment there. It's the end, in the end, though. They overlooked my unauthorized investigation at the Chief's office. If we penalized you anymore, it'd be worse than firing you. Yep, that's what they said. Just goes to show. You can't shake me off that easily. <laughs> See you, Gumshoe. Gumshoe really did help out a lot, you know. If not for him, we would never, we never would have nabbed, we never would have gotten the gaunt. You know? So that's nice. My new mission is to guard the main entrance and take care of Billy. Can you believe it? I've been demoted to a security guard. My partner is keeping an eye on the on the entrance for me today. <laughs> I'll show them though. Someday I'm going to make detective. Yes, sir. Then I'll be just like that dick gumshoe, sir. You don't want to be like that guy, sir. Though you're kind of working for it. Nikas was definitely fun. I like I like voicing him personally. It was pretty cool. Just saying. Why are they showing this? It's just him. The blue badger. This guy caused us a lot of trouble. Just, just a wriggling piece of plywood. Oh, I didn't mean it! I didn't mean it! Okay, now I feel bad. Now I kind of feel bad. I guess that has a certain charm to it with its with those dull, empty eyes. Yeah. What is it? Can't you see I'm having me a showdown with a steak lunch partner? Miss Star managed to sneak these into me. So she said one of the gods, it seems. Well, cowboy, looks like you did it. You even gave Bambina back her smile. Can you make sure Billy and the gang get their water? <laughs> yeah. Marshall was a little weird. Was, he definitely wasn't a cowboy. Looks like we won't be seeing <laughs> each other for a while. <laughs> As a farewell gift, I put a new meal on the menu. The right way for lunch. The top layer tastes as bitter as defeat, but the bottom layer is the sweetest victory. Kids seem to dig the turnabout theme. It's a hot seller around exam times. Just make sure not to eat it backwards. <laughs> yeah. If you eat it backwards, that's not really good. Yeah, it is kind of interesting, though. Let's make a nice little lunch box set. Hmm. She's always weird. I'll never forget what that young defense lawyer said after the trial. Let's see. Uh, what was his name again? Mr. Left? Anyway, he said he'd be doing something or other for how many years? Well, anyway... I've got another trial to go to, so I'd better be... Huh? Oh no! I forgot my gavel! Sorry, gotta go! That's a pretty epic seat for the judge. Well, that is pretty much like the judge, I guess. Thank you, Bone Global State Solutions, with the, the evidence room. On oh, JPA, and all you people, too. The, the evidence room. I just can't get over that. There's so many... There's a bunch of errors in this game. Oh! Ah! Not, 
Nothing so... Nah, nothing so soothes the soul like fresh country air. Still, something I do miss here is Nick and his objections. Still, I can't go back until I'm a full-fledged spirit medium. My afternoon training starts. It's about to begin. Coming! Well, see you around, Nick. Ah, oh, Maya. She might never got to voice the Maya parts of this game. Though I guess that's fine. I really, I really liked voicing all the breakdowns. It was really fun. Especially Gaunt's. Yikes, that laugh was crazy. He's the craziest laugh I've ever heard. Goodness. Mr. Edgeworth? Oh, Mr. Edgeworth? I brought you to your tea. Hmm? What's this? Go What's going on? Where'd he go? Edgeworth? Well, he's doing stuff. I guess he went, uh... Maybe he's on a soul search. Thanks for coming to see me off. I can't believe I'm going to Europe. Thank you, Mr. Wright. See you, thank you so much for everything. It's a little sad, but I'll be alright. Whenever I want to see Lana, all I have to do is open this book. <laughs> so, how about we open this book? Hey, there's an envelope. Honest guy, the prosecutor. Chief prosecutor. Scientific investigation, ahoy. Thanks, Capcom. This game's brilliant. Now just continue making them. And with that, we're finally done. All of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney! I'm pretty happy about this. It's always sad to see a Let's Play come to a close, but it's also kind of relieving at the end of it, you know? Well. Uh, I guess I'll see you then. Well, this is Let's Play. This was the final episode of Phoenix Wright. Let's Play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Rise in the Ashes. And Leeds 64 d And see you next time. Actually, there isn't a next time. See you next LP.